Hello everyone, this is Tim. Welcome to a Unity 3D introduction. We are going to create a 3D ping pong game. I assume that you have already installed Unity. I have the latest version 4.2. We create a new project by going to File, New Project, Browse and we select the folder for our project. We create a new one, call it Ping Pong and click Select Folder. Unity creates our project. At the center is the scene view where all our game objects are displayed. At the left hand side we have the hierarchy where all the game objects of the scene are listed. At the bottom we have the project view where all the resources that are part of our game are listed. At the right hand side we have the inspector. The inspector displays all the properties of a selected game object. Here we can manipulate the values. Ok, let's start with our ping pong game. First of all we create a crown for the arena. We go to game object, create other, cube. Here we see in the scene view a cube. On the right hand side all the properties. In Unity every project in the scene is basically a game object. A game object as I mentioned earlier is listed in the hierarchy. A game object is composed of multiple components. In case of this cube we have several components. So let me put them down here. So we got the transform component. The transform component tells Unity the position, the rotation and the scale of the game object. Then we got a mesh filter. A mesh filter describes how the ge geometry of a game object is like. Then we got a box collider that is part of the physics engine. It tells Unity how an object should behave in physical environment. And we got the mesh renderer that is in charge of rendering the geometry. Then here in the scene the navigation is quite easy if you are familiar with games like Ego Shooter. If you press the right mouse button you can look around. You can move your camera in the 3D space with the WASD key. So if I press the S key to go backward then W forward A for left, D to right and so on. So this is the, the basic movement of the, of the camera in the scene view. Let's select the cube here. Right in the scene we have different tools to change the transform of the cube. You can see them here. So we can just use this tool to, to move around the camera. Then we can use the move tool. So we have the small arrows where we can move the game object around in the scene where we can rotate the game objects and the scaling tool where we can scale the object in all directions. You can see that when I'm scaling the object all the parameters on the right hand side of the transform component over here change. We can even set the values manually by setting the values here. So let's put the scale back to 1 1 1 and the position to the root of the scene, so 0, 0, 0 and the rotation back to 0 as well. Ok, um, let's name this game object Arena Crown. You can do that by um, selecting the game object here and then here we can change the name of the game object. Let's so this is Arena 
background and we scale this object up to represent this as our arena ground so let's say along the x axis 20 and along the z axis about let's say 15 okay this is our crown for the arena next we add the border for the arena so we go to game object create other and cube we put the cube to the root of the scene with 0 0 0 then we select the, the position tool and move the cube up a little bit like this so that's one move it to the border of the arena crown like this align it and set the set value to 7 then we scale the object along the x-axis so this is 20 and we name this object arena border arena border enter we can duplicate this object for the other side of the arena we can do that by going to edit and duplicate control D then we select the move tool we can even select the move tool with W the rotation tool with E and the scaling tool with R so W for the movement tool we move the border to the other side make sure that it aligns very well we set it to minus 7 okay let's create the two other missing borders so we duplicate this object here again with control D we move it a little bit to the center rotate it for that we press the E key rotate it around for minus 90 degree then we change to the scaling tool and scale it down to fit this, the width of the arena so that's about 13 yeah that looks good so we move it to one border of the arena and we're going to make sure that this is 0 and this is minus 9.5 okay that looks good then we duplicate this object again with control D and move it to the other side that's obviously 9.5 here we go okay this is our arena okay everything is grey let add some color to add color to our borders here we have to change the material of the mesh renderer for that we have to create a material we go down here to the project right click create material we name this material arena border and we change the color to let's say a light red if we select the border here and then we can drag and drop this material to the material of the of the border and here you can see that the border is now red we do that again for the other f four borders we can also do that just by dragging the material on the game object here so I do this for the other remaining borders okay that looks good next we add a material for the arena ground so we create a new material with right click create material let's name this one arena ground 
and let us select the gray, drag and drop it, and here we got it. Next we position our camera here in the scene view so that we can see the complete arena well, so this looks good. We select the camera in the hierarchy and select game object align with view and this change the position and the rotation of the main camera to the current view here in the scene so you can see in the camera preview down here that the camera is now facing downward to the arena and we can see the whole arena Okay, if we now start this this game in the detour by play by clicking on the play button here, you can see everything is a little bit dark, so we have to add a directional light. Okay, we can do that by going to game object, create other and directional light. This will create a directional light that is similar to a sun. So if we play this game again, you can see everything is lighter. We have here some nice shades. Okay, The arena is in place and we are going to add the ball and the two players. For the players we add capsules. We go to game object, create other and capsule. Here we got a nice capsule we put it to the root of the scene and zero out the position. We move it a little bit upward and rotate it. And move it to one side of the arena. Let's adjust the values here. We set the, the height to, to 1, the position to minus 8 and the rotation to 90 degree. Then we change this uh, scale of the player. We call this one player left. Enter. We duplicate this player with Control D. We press W for the move tool and move the player to the other side. Position it to 8 and call it player right. OK. Let's add two materials for the players to distinguish them better. So right click create material. We call this one player left and we select a, a red color. Okay, here we go. Drag and drop to the left player. Then we create one more material right click create material we call this one player right and we select uh, a blue color okay here we got a blue color drag and drop on the player that looks nice next we add the ball so we go to game object create other sphere we put it at the root of the scene, zero it out, W for the move tool, we move it up for one. Yeah, that looks good. We rename it to ball and recreate a new material. Right click, create material and call this one ball. The ball will be... Ah, green, light green. That's a good color, isn't it? Okay, if we start the game, ooh, everything looks fine. Okay, let's add some interaction. First of all, we start with the ball. To move the ball around, we must add a rigid body. Okay, to do that, we go to add component enter rigid 
and we got here rigid body. Okay, um, that the ball behaves nicely and looks smooth when it's rendered. We set the interpolation to interpolate. We set the collision detection to continuous dynamic. That means if the ball is moving really fast, we can detect the collision, otherwise we won't. This takes some more computing, but it's more precisely. And yeah, that looks good. Next, we are going to create our first script to move the ball. To create a script, we right click in the project, create and say C sharp script. We call this one ball. Double click on the script to open Mono Develop. Mono Develop is an IDE for C sharp that runs on Windows, Linux and Mac. And here we can program behavior for the game objects. All the scripts are inherited from Mono Behavior and Mono Behavior is inherited from a component and a component is basically a thing that we can attach to a game object. And to move the ball we add an initial impulse. To do that we create a public variable, variable that we can set from the editor. So we create an, an vector. We call it public vector3 initial impulse um, that we can set in the editor. That method is called when this component is attached to the game object. We take the rigid body of this game object, in this case the ball, and we invoke the method add force and we select as our force the initial impulse and select as force mode impulse. So what it basically is when we start the game the ball will receive one impulse that we can set in the editor. Okay, control S to save the script. We go back to the Unity editor. Here we got the script. Now we select the ball and we can drag and drop the ball script over here to the inspector and here you can see our public variable. It's called initial impulse and we can set the values of the initial impulse. So let's say we want to move the ball to the right top corner here. We set the x-axis to let's say 4 and the z-axis to 4 and if we start the game with the play button you can see that the ball is moving. Well, it's not bouncing from the border. Okay, let's add some physic material. Okay, to add a physic material, we go to the project, right click, create physic material. We call this one ball physic. And here we can set parameters that describe how the object should behave if it collides with another object. Friction means movement is uh, slowed down, so we don't want to slow down the movement of our ball, so we set the friction to zero. Bounciness describes how bouncy an object is and the ball should be absolutely bouncy. So we set the value 1. That means if we hit something the bounciness is 
100%. Here we can select how the how the friction is suited if two um, if two uh, physical materials collide. So we set this one to minimum. Minimum means we we have zero from this object, and for the for the bounce we set maximum. That means that we always want the bounciness of one. Okay, we select the ball. We select the sphere collider, and we drag and drop the ball physic to the material over here. If we start this game now again, you can see that the ball is bouncing from the border. Okay, nice. Let's add some movement to our players. Okay, to do that we create a new script called player. So right click create C sharp script player. Double click on the script to open it. Okay, here we go. Um the player will be moved with the keyboard and to describe how fast the player should move, we must set a, a speed variable that describes that. So we had a variable called public float speed. Speed means the the units a uh, player moves per second. So let's set a default value of 15. Okay, the start method we don't need this one and here we got the update method. The update method is called every time the scene is updated and here we can check if a player has pressed a key and if a player pressed the key we can move the player. To recognize which key a player has pressed, we must configure the the keys. So we go back to Unity. Oh, by the way, we can save the scene by file, save scene, and let's call this one ping pong. It's already here in the asset folder, so we click save, and here we got the scene. Um, back to the input, we go to edit, project settings, input. Here we got our input manager. Let's go to vertical. Um, as you can already see here in the vertical button, in the vertical, um, the buttons down and up are already configured. And so this is the control of the right player. So we call this one player right. The alternate buttons of of this are S and W, but we want S and W for the left player. So we remove S and W and create a new import for player right. To do that, we increase the size to 16. This will add down here one more entry. We change the name to player left and the negative button to S and the positive button to W. Okay, now the input is configured. Let's change back to the player script. And the player script we can access the, the keyboard value by input dot get raw get access raw and here we can set the, the access name. So we call them player left and player left in the input manager. So I call this one player left float 
import speed and if the if the player left presses the W key this method will return a 1 if the player press the S key it will return minus 1 and if the player pr is pressing nothing it will just return 0 so let's add an enumeration so this player script will be attached to the left and to the right player and to distinguish between them we are going to add an enumeration so we add one and call it eplayer so public enum eplayer with two entries left and right we add a public variable for the for the player so public eplayer player now we can check if the player here is attached to the left or to the right one and check the corresponding input so let's say the default value is 0 and if we are player left player left here we go then we take the input speed of the player left input otherwise if the player is player right we take the input speed of the right player let's copy this one player right here we go to actually move the player we can access the transform component this one has a property called position and this is the world position and we are changing the set position of our player to move it so let's say position plus equal a new vector x is 0, y is 0 and z is the actual value so we take the input speed from the keyboard multiply it with the speed that we set in the inspector and multiply it with the delta time that is elapsed since the last time the script is called so th this makes basically sure that if you run this game on a high-end computer it's running with the same speed as on a low computer so this update method is called more often if you have a fast computer and less often when you have a slow computer and if we multiply the speed with the, with the delta time the time that elapsed since the last time this update method was invoked the speed is is the same on all platforms okay let's save the script with control s and let's go back to unity we add the script to the players so we select player left we add the script players left speed is 15 that's okay then player right we drag and drop the script here we have to change the player to right okay if we now start the game and I move with the arrow keys you can see I can move the right player and with W and S I can move the left player and um, you can see we have one problem and we can leave the arena so we must pre prevent that so we go back to the scene and to do that we have to add a rigid body to the player so here we go we add a rigid body again add component or another way is just to go to component physics and rigid body here we got him 
okay this is the rigid body um, yeah um, the paddle is as much more heavier than the ball and uh, the bounciness is working properly we must set the mass to a high value let's say a thousand we disable the gravity we set interpolate to interpolate to make sure that it looks nice and we constrain the, the movement of this rigid body so that it can only move along the set axis so we freeze the, the position and the rotation of the other axis okay that looks nice uh, we also have to add a rigid body to the nada player we can do that easily by clicking here left select copy component we select the other player and say past component as new so we basically copy the whole component with the parameters and if we now start the game again and I move the left player you can see I I cannot exit the arena uh, okay you can see I sometimes can can penetrate the border to prevent this I go back out of the game mode you must disable the interpolation okay this should work so let's test this one okay it's working we cannot leave the arena with our players that's nice okay everything is fine now let's add the behavior if the ball hits the border behind player to do that we create a new script right click create C sharp script and we call this one player border double click to open monod envelope unity calls a method called on collision enter with the collision information the collision information has a game object that collides with this game object in our case this is the ball and from that game object I gonna get the ball component so we save it at a local variable ball and to make sure that it's actually the ball we check for null if we have the ball we set the position of the ball back to the center of the arena so we have the ball transform position is a vector 3 of 0 1 0 control s to save the script okay let's add the script to the borders let's select the right border drag and drop the script and select the left border drag and drop the script let's run the game and as you can see if the ball hits the border behind the player it will be positioned at the center of the arena okay let's add the UI to display the score to do that we create a new script called score UI right click create C sharp script score UI let's open this one in mono develop unity has a built-in function called on GUI this method is invoked if the GUI is drawn to display the score at the top center of the game we must calculate the horizontal center of the screen so we define a new local variable called X and to do that we have the screen width that tells us how width the current screen is and we divide that through 2 so we got the center of the screen the Y position let's say 30 and the width of the label 
that will display the text uh, 300 and the height let's say 20. We can draw an actual label with GUI label and we can set a rect that describes the position where we want to draw the label. So new rect, the left of the table is the center minus half the width. Then the top is the y, the width is the width and the height. Next we set the text. For the text we define two variables with the current score of the players. So the score for the right player and the score for the left player. And the text is just the score of the left player as a slash between them and the score of the right player. To display the label in the center of the position that I described here, we add a GUI st style. So public GUI style. Okay, that's our score UI script. Let's go back to Unity. We create a new game object and call this one UI and we add the score UI script. Then under style we want to center the text. So we set the alignment to middle center we set the font to Arial and the font size to 20. If we start the game, you can see that the score is displayed in the center here. Okay, let's increase the score. To do that, we go back to our player border script. Um, we must determine if this is the border of the left or the right player so we add the player enumeration e player if this is the border of the right player we will increase the score of the left player increase the score of the left player we need a reference to the UI score score UI score and here we can increase the score of the player left otherwise if this is the player left also left we increase the score of the player right. Here we go. If we select the right border, we set the player to right and drag and drop the score UI script here. We select the left border, player left is OK and drag and drop the score UI. Now we play this game and as you can see the score is working. Okay. This was an introduction to Unity 3D, how to program a 3D ping pong game. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to leave a comment.